As you can see from the background, you can see we've moved on a little, the plants are in the ground, um, and what we'll do is show you how we've got there. Um, we potted up a tuber from the packet early on, and that's produced three shoots from that plant, this being the plant. Um, that's fine, that can go in the ground, and that can grow on and produce flowers. If they've shooted away earlier, and this is actually another tuber in the pot, then you can remove the growing tip and branch them out because you can only plant these really from end of May anyway, we don't want them to get frosted. And you can see that this plant has produced flower buds and it will have flowers on it in the next two to three weeks. So that's going to be fine for the vase um, and for the garden. It's going to give us flowers about a month or so, even two months before the show flowers. The show plants is different and how we get to that stage um, we'll cover next. But as far as getting early flowers from the tubers that you've got from the garden centres or even from the ground, then this is absolutely fine. From a show point of view, um, we're trying to time our flowers to flower when we want them and generally for shows that's going to be end of August, August bank holiday into the first couple of weeks of September. Um, this would have been a plant that we've, we've taken a cut in the second week of April. Um, potted it up into the small three inch pot and it's grown, grown away quite nicely. I'd be quite happy to plant that plant um, at the end of May into the ground and know it's going to confidently grow on and, and be a good show flower uh, at the end of it. This one is a big strong plant, it's got a lovely big stem on there but it's hard. It, it's been in the pot too long if we take the, the pot off we'll see a lot of matted root um, and that's going to struggle to get out. There's probably tuber formation inside. And it's a bit like tomato plants. If you look at the seed leaves, the ones at the base, which were the original cutting leaves, if they're in a poor condition, generally the plant is. That will go in the ground and it will produce a good flower. Um, it won't be as good as the, as the younger plant, but it'll sit there for about a week, two weeks, not growing, waiting to do so. So ideally we don't really want our plants like that and we don't really want to be planting them in the ground. Now with, with timing, um, this being a palm actually, we have to have a lot of flowers on this um, to get the flower size down. So there's a process where we're, we're removing the growing tip and stopping the plants. Some of this is done in the ground, uh, with the palms a lot of it is done in the pot before it goes into the ground. And we've got the plant here with about four or five pairs of leaves. Now ideally we only want two or three pairs and it's quite simple um, by removing the growing tip. Now you can use your, your fingernails, your thumbnail if you like, um, or a knife, but I find thumbnail fine. And we just break through and remove the growing tip. That is of no use, that can go be thrown away, it's a bit late for trying to take a cut in now. Um, and it leaves us with a plant with three pairs of leaves and shoots in the centre. That grown on slightly gives us this, and the wind's knocked it about a bit. And we've got the side shoots developed into shoots themselves, and on here we've got four of them. Now ideally that would be potted into a larger pot so that we don't get root compaction, and that's absolutely fine as it is, but we'll be moving that on into a bigger pot and it'll actually be ready um, to stop again, so a second stop. And here's that plant in a larger pot. Um, this will be the last size pot before it goes in the ground. And you can see that there's good, strong side shoots from that. Now on these, with the palms, I would tend to work on the basis of two pairs of leaves, and we remove these again at two pairs. And you do the same to each one, to and there until the plant's completely done um, and that will be ready then to go in the ground and it's going to produce us, we've got six shoots on here we're leave, leaving four shoots per stem so we're going to be into the region of 24 shoots from this plant going into the ground which is a good base when we're expecting in excess of perhaps 30 to 40 flowers from this plant um, so that's single stop and uh, double stop most of the single stops uh, occur in the ground and you would use a double stop if you want to get in excess of 8 to 10 flowers on the plant or you're controlling timing which we will cover um, from the ground plants. 
Throughout the season, um, we use a variety of plant foods, insecticides and chemicals. And it's probably best just to cover those here while we can. Um, when it comes to planting and in the ground, we put what we call term a, a base dressing, which is a, generally a granular fertiliser that goes into the ground that releases slowly. Um, this is actually a lawn builder, which is quite high in nitrogen, um, but the uh, tub that it's actually in, the, the poultry pellets, um, do just as well, as well as either bone meal, grow more, or Q4, any of those granular fertilisers will work more than fine or a combination of all. And you would use that whether, again, you're growing for the, for the garden or for show. Um, getting something in the ground, under the plant, when you plant is important because you can't put it under there afterwards. Um, from there on you reduce a, a variety of liquid feeds that are put in through water directly to the plant roots. Um, early on, I through June I tend to use something like this which is lawn food. Um, it's high in nitrogen which is going to promote good strong leaf growth and stem growth. Um, some may not use the, the high nitrogen um, out of choice and they would go straight for something that is quite balanced which this would be an, a balanced feed. Now feeding is a big subject but if you're growing for flour and for the vase then once a week, once a fortnight will pay dividends to that. Um, for show it's more than likely once a week. Once you get into main se into flowering season, which would be uh, August and into September, then you'll be using a high potash feed, something like uh, tomorite, anything that is uh, high in potash you can get. Uh, Phosphogen is also a high potash soluble food. Um, and that's going to promote stem strength and colour. Now as far as the nasties, um, and we all know that there's a few nasties that like dahlias, um, there isn't a lot you can you can use or need to use. It's just a ca case of being consistent with it. So once planted, those lovely little slug creatures will be out and about. Um, so slug pellets, you can get organic slug pellets if you've got pets. Um, but these are the normal slug pellets. Plenty of those. They last about two weeks if it's raining before they break down into the ground. So it's something you do need to reapply. Um, Bug wise, you tend to get green fly, black fly um, about in the early stages. Possibly red spider mite can come later on in the year. Um, and obviously, earwigs, which everyone seems to associate with dahlias. So, a routine spray once a fortnight um, or more will we'll keep on top. Don't do it more frequently than once a fortnight because they can build up an immunity. But if you see a problem, deal with it rather than let it get worse and uh, a general insecticide like bug clear will do that for you. The only uh, other thing that affects plants of all types but dahlias as well um, is powdery mildew and that's generally an environmental thing when it's, it's very damp or very dry. You get downy and powdery. Fungus clear um, is a good general fungicide. Now please bear in mind that when we film uh, something that years down the line you might be watching it, these products may not still be on the shelf. It's just a case of finding the, the, the general insecticide, the general fungicide that is available at the time um, and they will all do the same job. You can use either a hand sprayer for uh, small amounts when you're in a greenhouse or small amounts of plants, that will do the job. Um, when you're dealing with the volume that we've got here then generally a backpack sprayer is a, the, the best way to apply. With the feeds, um, watering cans, again one can will do perhaps four plants, five plants. Um, I tend to use a pump system and pump it out and it saves a lot of time for me on that. So that's generally all you're going to need. Uh, the itinerary to, to get through the season is just picking the right times to use them um, and we'll illustrate that as we go on. Right, we're going to use this bed here in front of the cottage uh, for growing and we're going to grow more for garden display, we're going to try to make it look pretty and obviously cut for cut flower as well. 
So quite simply, the planting processes are the same bit for exhibition or, or show. We're just going to apply the base dressing that we mentioned earlier, and a good handful is about four, two to four uh, ounces, depends how big your hand is, and that should be applied over about a square yard. So a good couple of handfuls over that area. We'll do that. And then quite simply just rake it into the surface. Like that, it just helps it mix into the soil. And that'll be ready then for planting. Um, and we're just going to mark, put some canes in to mark the planting spaces and then dig the holes. Quite often we'll put another uh, dusting of fertiliser into the planting holes just to give them a bit of extra help. OK, we're just going to mark the plants out about 18 inches, two foot apart. There's a couple of plants in here from last year, so we'll just work around those. And it just makes it easier to plant the holes. And these canes then actually form the uh, supporting cane for the plant as it grows. It's better to stagger them if you can. Right, so that's all the canes in. We've just placed a plant by each cane, ready to plant, save a bit of time. We know where the plant's going, so we just take the cane out and make a bigger hole than the pot itself. Like so. Again, a little sprinkle of feed around and in the hole, so that when we backfill that goes with it. Plant out the pot, and this is actually a Rycroft Pixie, which is a miniature cactus, and is known for being short. Not jumping up and down on this, we're just firming it around the plant, make sure it's in contact with, with soil and root, and just leaving a well around the plant so that as we water, it stays around the root ball. Back cane goes in, that's that planted, the only thing you'd do to that then is a good watering in, as you can see the water stays around the plant itself and will soak into the ground as it is now. That won't probably need them watering for about another week and it'll be away. One thing I would do is, as we've done earlier, is just pinch the top out to encourage these side shoots to, to develop and as we're growing these for, for flowers and for the vase I wouldn't do any further stopping on that plant, just let it come into flower now. So we just plant the rest and then we'll uh, apply the sucker pellets. Right, we've popped the rest of the plants in, they've all had a, uh, a drink. The only thing left to do with these now is to uh, stop them from being lunch. And that'll be a small handful of slug pellets and scatter them just around. And you do that for the whole bed and just remember that they will only last a couple of weeks so don't put too many because you've got to make them last. The cane that marked the plant is now here as a back support and later on once the plants grow we'll probably add two further canes to form a triangle to tie the plant up to stop it blowing over. Probably not so necessary with this one being such a, a short flowering variety. The only things we're going to need to do there on um, is making sure they don't dry out. Possibly a spray for the uh, bug killer um, and the fungicide and just allow the plant now to settle in, produce its roots and grow. Right, we're on the uh, exhibition plot now and these plants have been in for about two, two and a half weeks and this variety particularly, Sir Ralph Ramsey, it's a giant deck and it's naturally quite late to flower. So we have to stop this plant early otherwise it'll end up being after all the others and not a lot of use. So because it's a giant deck we're only going to be growing about four flowers to the plant. There's no value in just removing the growing tip 
up here like we did to the ponds earlier. Um, all that's going to do is give us about 10 or 12 shoots. I only really want four or a choice to go down to four. So we're not going to take it out there. We're going to look at the plant and we can see that we've got one, two, three, four good pairs of leaves there with shoots just coming and the rest of the plant here. Now, you could go down here, but really the problem could be that these shoots may not develop enough. So play it safe, although it doesn't look all that safe. I'm going to go up here in, in between these two pairs of leaves here. So we're going to cut this. So we're going to take one, the grain tip, one, two, three pairs straight out. I'm going to come in here and try to get it quite close to the, the leaf joint. You don't want to leave a long tail and try not to cut through the shoots either side or your thumb. So that comes off. That's the plant that we don't need anymore. That can go in the bin or in the compost heap. And we've left two, four, six, possibly eight pairs of, of leaves or eight shoots to come from that. Now with giants they have this big hollow stem. Rather than cutting down deeper, if we wanted to restrict it, we could just leave that pair of leaves and remove these shoots here. I won't, we could deal with that later when we're selecting the breaks from this plant. That will now grow out, fill out and become these, hopefully becoming the flowering shoots for the uh, August bank holiday onwards. Now I've got to do that to the rest of the plants of that variety and over the next week, two weeks or so, I'll work the way through the plot, removing the, the tips, stopping the plants um, on the varieties that are then naturally a bit earlier. Right, there's one further job to do on these plants. We've stopped them. Luckily we've had a lot of rain this year uh, and there's a lot of moisture in the ground. We've put the hoe around. We've got slug pellets already around in the area. And that's, that's to apply the mulch. Now a mulch is to suppress the weeds, to keep the moisture in the ground and keep the ground cool. That in turn does help the flower development later on. I use straw, some people use manure. Um, others use a, a fabric on the ground and plant through it. I prefer the straw, it's clean, it makes the area clean when it's down. It's relatively cheap, although I do use up to about 50 bales for the whole area. Um, it's a case of it, get it done now while we can. The pipe in here that you see next to the plant is a, a drip pipe and that runs all the water and feed when I pump it out to the plants and saves quite a few hours a week in watering and feeding. So we're happy with the plant, it's been sprayed this week, we've got slug pellets on the ground, there's moisture in the ground and it's just a case of putting the straw in. Now there's no benefit in uh, putting it down very thinly over the top because it soon compresses, the wind will take it away and it's not really doing a lot of benefit. So I put it in a good six inches or so around all around the plant and then the paths get done as well and the thing to do is to make sure it's well fluffed but not necessarily tight against the stem of the plant so just run your hand around the stem make sure the leaves are out and exposed like so and that will keep the moisture in the ground it'll help keep it cool and then obviously we carry on throughout the whole bed, we do the paths as well and we go across the whole plot. So it all looks a little bit like a strawberry field at the end but um, that's that. It's a good job done and it makes it easier when you're kneeling and working on the ground as well.